Well, uh, first off, this is why we call this the rolling ingot is because of this. Um, this is a solid steel frame on this locomotive. And and the uh, the, well, the front end, the front end and the back end, the front pilot and the rear platform was cut off. And we're going to fabricate all of that, remake it new, and uh, basically restore this to its original appearance. Um, now that the locomotive is here on site, probably the, uh, the first thing we're going to start doing is um, we pull the, uh, the eccentric rods off, take main rods off, and just see if we can get this thing to roll back and forth a little bit. See if the, uh, the drivers are frozen or if they're free. And if we can get it freed up, then we're going to roll it around the building, and around the bend, and put it in the engine house, get it inside. If it's frozen, then we've got other issues to deal with and figure that out when we get there. Um, we had to take the boiler back up to Middlefield for work. So all of these various different pieces of parts are going to have to come off. Um, and we'll take all that stuff off here. We'll do all the sonic inspection of the boiler. Uh, there's some areas that are concerning. A lot of this pack rust in here, figuring out uh, what our thickness is. And basically, before we even take the boiler up there, we're going to make sure that there aren't problems on this that are going to be beyond our budget to, to solve. So, we'll do the good evaluation. Assuming that the boiler is good, we'll take it up there, get the work done. If not, figure that out later. Um, while the locomotive is, or while the boiler is gone, uh, we'll take and take the, uh, the binders off and jack the frame up, roll the drivers out, and uh, do a thorough inspection of all that, clean up as much as we can, flush out the, uh, the cannon boxes, and uh, then put the drivers back on put that all back together and then start working on the front and rear uh, the, the framework and then do the uh, you know whatever whatever bushings either we replace any other parts that need to be replaced we'll do that by that time the boiler work should be done bring the boiler back down put it back on the frame uh, and then the next step is just to uh, fire the boiler and get the locomotive to run under its own power and um, once we've got it that condition, then we'll start work on putting the cab on, put the uh, water tank on, and everything else we have to do to finish it up. So that's, that's pretty much it, and that ought to take us about a year and a half. <laughs> well, um, here we are. This is the first uh, full day that the uh, locomotive is here on the property. Um, it's about 18 degrees and uh, a little chilly, but I want to get started on some of the uh, cleanup of the locomotive so we have a good idea of what we're dealing with here. Um, <clears throat> so probably the first thing I'll be doing here is just getting in here with the shop vac and sucking out as much of this uh, rust and dirt as I can. I want to get in there and take a look at that uh, bottom part of the front flue sheet and see how much corrosion we have there. If there's too much corrosion, we may have to replace either part or all of that uh, tube sheet. So, you know, that's uh, being a um, pretty big expense. If we can avoid it, uh, that would be good. Um, <clears throat> one of the other things I know we will have to replace, you see this liner here. This liner is completely rotted through uh, towards the bottom here. So all of that, this is going to have to be taken out and replaced. And... Um, you know, hopefully we don't have too many other problems that we find. Okay, uh, now that I have sucked out as much of the uh, loose dirt as possible, the next thing is to get in here with a rosebud and heat up the, uh, the rest of it. A lot of it is um, just frozen in there because it's so cold and it was damp. So we'll just heat it up a little bit and then you know suck it out a little bit more.
Now one of the uh, one of the nice things about the rosebud is that if you uh, if you play the flame over uh, the, uh, the heavy scales of rust, it'll heat the rust up and pop it off. So it makes it a lot easier to get that rust off of the uh, off the surface. Well, it's uh, time here to see if we can get some of this, um, these rods off. Um, we'll see how well this stuff goes. So we'll start with the, uh, the eccentric rod first. Oh, well, that was easy enough. Oh, that looks, actually that looks pretty well lubricated there. Now I haven't done anything to this yet. I haven't put any penetrating oil or anything on here. I'm just going at the, uh, the various nuts and seeing what I can get off before we go to more extreme measures. So, so far so good. All right, so around here, whenever we're working on anything like this, a machine surface or something that can be uh, hurt by a hammer blow, I always use the, uh, the, the copper hammer or the brass bar. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but these are at least softer metals, and if anything will deform, hopefully the hammer will, and not what you're beating on. This looks like it has a pin that goes through here and and it's budging a little bit. There we are, the first part off of the engine, right side eccentric rod. seem to be in there a little bit tighter so uh, 
give it a little bit of heat. Shims here. The bigger shim. Put those up here. appears to be in there rather tight. Well, after cleaning this up back here, it looks like we have some substantial pitting on the bottom and back side here in a pretty decent groove right here, uh, you know, where the two bearings came together. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a little bit concerning. We'll have to figure out what to do with this. Um, so I've... I got a little bit of an idea of what we're dealing with on the bushing on these pins and probably you know maybe do one on the other side would be like that to take these uh, take this off here and see what those are like um, but uh, I'm gonna turn my attention to something else right now and uh, you know, let's take a closer look at the uh, um, at the cylinders and see what the condition of the cylinders in this side up a little bit.
this locomotive has been sitting outside for 40, 50 years since it's last ran. And this stuff hasn't been touched in that amount of time. Yet, it just come right loose. streak here from water getting into the valves and they're running down here laying in here there's some there's some uh, rusting up on top but I think that's a lot of because there wasn't very much um, cylinder oil built up up there um, this cylinder cock must have been open because the water only laid up to the cylinder cock level so uh, yeah, I think we'll be able to get her free. It's not too bad. So, um, all right, well, we'll take this off next and see what we got going on up here. Let's see what this valve looks like.
see anything because we're at the end of the stroke, but at least there's no water and no corrosion. 